the year 2000 and 2001, a small non-profit hospital in South Delhi had a cesarean section rate of 79%. This was despite the fact that we had some of Delhi's best doctors. Our women were well nourished, maybe slightly overnourished, and we are well resourced by Indian standards. So I thought, here's an easy opportunity for us to make a difference. When I went with the idea of launching a project of reducing cesarean sections to our consultants, I didn't get much of a response. So what I did was that I hired two recently trained obstetricians who had come out of Delhi's teaching institutions, and I started a staff obstetric unit. They were employed on a salary full time so that they won't be competing with one another for patients so that they could focus on doing development work uh, outside of just building their practices. And uh, we hired them with the explicit understanding that they would focus on providing evidence-based maternity care and lower this ridiculously high cesarean section rate that we had. We started childbirth education classes, we started reviewing our outcomes on a regular basis, and at the end of the first year, we achieved a cesarean section rate of about 40%. So I thought, great, I mean, we just have to keep doing more of what we've started, and pretty soon maybe we'll hit a mark of about 25%, which should be, you know, which would be respectable. But in the, in the subsequent years, the cesarean rate didn't come down. And I responded by digging into the evidence base for maternity care, trying to spot where we might be going wrong. I was learning about the improvement science and the methodology that the IHI was uh, promoting, the model for improvement. I took that improvement methodology to our consultants. I sent our consultants to exemplary centers in the UK and in India. I invited a very eminent obstetrician from the National Maternity Hospital in, in Ireland to come and visit us, but none of this helped. I even tried to bully my consultants. I'm a, I'm a small guy, but, but I tried to be as fierce as I could. Even that didn't work. And by 2007, our cesarean rate was up from to about 50%. And by now, I'd been the chief executive for five years, so I couldn't blame our situation on people who had come before. I couldn't work harder. I didn't believe I was stupid, but I had to take responsibility for the fact that we weren't getting results. And I decided at that point of time to seek further training myself, and I applied to business school. And I went to business school from 2008 to 2010. And once I came back from business school, you know, uh, we started a sort of second innings at the same hospital. And as I got sucked into this project again, I was determined to throw at it everything that we had. And this time, the circumstances were also altered. Our quality manager in the interim had completed the improvement advisor program of the Institute for Healthcare Improvement, which is their flagship program. And under her leadership, we started a quality department. Uh, we had quality officers collecting all sorts of data about our maternity service. And this data was fed to our consultants at the end of every month um, by the unit and by their individual performance. We also joined the perinatal improvement community of the Institute uh, for Healthcare Improvement, which is a, a collaborative of about 50 plus hospitals working in maternity care. And this was very useful because it gave us a framework for assessing our care. And we used to have endless debates about where to start and how to improve. And joining the perinatal improvement community sort of put an end to that debate as we got some standard templates to start working with. We also started focusing on the low risk first birth women as the area of maximum uh, impact. And along this journey, we continued to have hiccups. And there was no real point at which, you know, we experienced a breakthrough. But all along, we were progressing. And very importantly, uh, we had a obstetrician who really liked the idea of reducing cesarean sections, not because of any incentives, but because she believed it was the right thing to do for her women. And she was really innovating at the front line. I mean, I was making a lot of, you know, I was applying a lot of pressure as the chief executive for certain changes, but she was innovating at the front line, uh, you know, looking at what needed to be done with our women in our setting. And, and, and she uh, not only lowered her rates, but she also acted as a catalyst for a whole unit to, to slowly start improving. Uh, we are very concerned that, you know, the cesarean sections and induction rates are very high in the maternity care, especially in the private sector in our state. So what we are really trying to do is that we are trying to introduce clinical interventions and some strategic interventions 
to make all our consult, uh, obstetrician consultants aware of this problem and we are trying to build on teamwork basically, uh, nursing support much better so as to reduce the interventions both in the antenatal and the intrapartum period. It was really interesting. When I read Rinku's story, I realized that her perspective on why this thing had succeeded was significantly different from my perspective. Um, Rinku had put a lot of effort on antenatal education of families, um, advising them about the importance of exercise, about eating healthy, not putting on excessive weight, counseling them in advance about some of the benefits of a normal delivery, not looking at cesarean section as the easy way out. Um, and uh, something that she doesn't really point out is that, you know, we don't have many well-trained midwives in India. Rinku personally sat by many of these laboring women for long hours to support them through, through their labor. Uh, Rinku was also very good in engaging some of her colleagues and has been, uh, has been uh, very active in training nurses. And so she's a good team player. I understood after hearing her uh, tell her story that as a chief executive, there are many things about the front line that you just don't know. You don't even know that you don't know. And anything that you are trying to push through the organization, by the time it reaches the front line, it's really attenuated. So if you're going to succeed, you need a front line person who buys your vision and who has the ability and the courage to innovate at the front line. Because often what's, what is going to be required for success is not going to be something that's going to be always visible to you as the chief executive sitting in a, in a, in a corner office. Basically, we want to uh, make other people aware of our work because uh, a lot of people um, are not very, very sure about how far this work will go. Uh, you know, it will be limited to our institution. We want to spread this idea so that more and more patients and mothers benefit from this. And this movement kind of spreads so that there are less interventions in maternity care. And when we now look back at our journey in 2014, we had a total cesarean section rate of 32%, which is not bad compared to the average rate of 54% for Delhi's private hospitals and our own rates in the 50% range from 2007 till 2011. And our low risk first birth cesarean rate has come down to 21%, which is in the respectable zone. So as I sort of think back about this journey, I, I think uh, there are sort of three lessons here for healthcare professionals, both managers and clinicians. One is that if you're going to attempt a serious challenge, you need to be prepared for the for, you need to be prepared to stick with it in the long term. And, and I think you can stick with something in the long term if it's really in sync with your values. So for us doing the right thing for women, for us to create an environment where doctors could actually practice medicine the way it should be practiced, and to do something that was right for the healthcare system is core to our purpose as a nonprofit organization. But we also learned that if you're good, perseverance by itself is not enough. You need to be able to pursue improvement intelligently. And here I would say that all healthcare professionals should embrace improvement science. Uh, our learning as part of the perinatal improvement community and the IHI improvement methodology was critical to our success. And, and thirdly, uh, I think healthcare professionals should um, connect with others who share their values. I mean, none of this would have worked without the lead clinician obstetrician embracing it. Um, and I think if healthcare professionals do that, they, they take time to introspect and identify their own values, pick goals that are in sync with those values, embrace improvement science, and connect with others who share their values. I think they can have a much bigger impact uh, in their careers and overall be more satisfied. That sort of sums up our journey, I think, uh, as, as I try and make sense of this 15-year journey.